If you own one of the most popular AR-15 configurations bought and sold today, there is actually a possibility that your rifle might be by default a little overgassed and therefore under-optimized. And it might have implications for things like reliability, felt recoil, and even maintenance. So let's talk about it. Now before we talk about why your rifle might be overgassed, let's do a quick refresher on how exactly the AR-15 functions and explain really why this is so important in the first place. So unlike a lot of modern semi-automatic rifles, which use either something like an operating rod or a gas-operated piston system, the AR-15 remains the same as it was designed back in the 1950s and it uses an incredibly simple function called direct impingement. Now with direct impingement, gas is siphoned out of the barrel through a gas port. It's just a simple hole drilled into the barrel. And that gas is sent through a gas block and ultimately through a gas tube where it is sent directly into the bolt carrier group via the gas carrier key. Now once it's inside the bolt carrier group, it actually pressurizes the assembly and that's what forces the bolt to unlock via the cam pin, ultimately driving the bolt rearward. As it does that, it ejects your spent shell casing, it resets the hammer and trigger, it bounces off the buffer and the recoil spring inside the buffer tube, and it picks up a new round to chamber it, and then you're ready to fire once again. Now, direct impingement systems are super simple, and they are reliable. They have fewer moving parts than a rifle that operates with a gas piston or an operating rod of some kind, but they're not without their drawbacks. You see, you're taking hot gas directly from the barrel and you're piping it directly into the bolt carrier group. So you're sending a bunch of heat and carbon fouling into the bolt carrier group. It can also make its way into the barrel extension as well as the fire control components. So it's very important that you make sure the system's carefully tuned. If you're sending too much gas into the bolt carrier group, you're basically causing unnecessary wear and tear on on your serviceable components inside the rifle, and you're also sending unnecessary heat and carbon fouling in there, and there's no reason to do that. Now, how do you determine whether this thing is carefully tuned or not? Well, that comes down to something called dwell time. Now, what is dwell time? Well, let's explain. So dwell time can be measured two ways. Most firearm engineers and designers are gonna tell you that dwell time is measured as soon as the round ignites and until it exits the muzzle. But the subset of dwell time that we're concerned about is the time at which the round passes the gas port and before it exits the muzzle. And the reason this specific portion of dwell time is so important is because as soon as the round passes the gas port, the port is open and that pressurized gas from the cartridge can go through the port. But before the round exits the muzzle, it's basically acting like a plug. And so all that pressurized gas only has one way to go. And that's through the port, through the block, through the tube, and then ultimately into the bolt carrier group. So all that's to say is that the dwell time between the port and the muzzle directly determines how much pressurized gas makes its way into the bolt carrier group. And therefore it determines whether the AR-15 is properly gassed or if it's under gassed or over gassed. So now that we've gone over dwell time and gas system length versus barrel length, we can get back to the original point that I was making in the beginning of this video. And that is that one of the most common AR-15 configurations on the market is unfortunately probably a little over gassed. And I am talking about a 16 inch barreled upper receiver with a carbine length gas system. Because of that relatively short gas system and that relatively long barrel length, there is excessive dwell time. So you're sending a little bit too much gas into the bolt carrier group. And it's not just me telling you this, by the way. So the Naval Service Warfare Center, also called the Crane Division, which is tasked with researching and developing new weapon systems for the special operations community, they actually took an M4 carbine upper receiver, which has a 14 and a half inch barrel and a carbine length gas system, so even less dwell time than a 16 inch barrel, and they compared it to one of these. This is a near clone of a URGI upper receiver with a Geisley Mark 16 inch rail. More importantly though, it has a 14 and a half inch barrel with a mid-length gas system. And they compared this to that M4 carbine upper receiver. What they did was they sent 30,000 rounds through both upper receivers, and what they found at the end of that testing was pretty significant. Uh, basically, this upper receiver with a mid-length gas system actually suffered about half as many failures. It had 30 failures out of 30,000 rounds, whereas the M4 carbine upper receiver had 65 failures out of 30,000 rounds. Now, we're talking about a 99.9% .9 reliability rating versus 99.8%. So both of the upper receivers had a great track record. And that's not surprising considering the M4 carbine has been in service for literally decades now. But what they also found was that at the end of testing, the mid-length upper was more accurate. It had five MOA groupings as opposed to the carbine upper's seven MOA groupings. 
And just as well, they actually found that the mid-length equipped rifle had nine to 10, I forget exactly which one it was, it was either nine or 10 serviceable components that needed to be repaired or replaced, compared to the carbine equipped rifle, which had 13 serviceable components that needed to be repaired or replaced. Now, at the end of the day, am I telling you that you should rip the barrel off of your upper and replace it with a system that has a mid-length uh, gas port? Well, no, I'm not. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the carbine gas system and 16 inch barrel is probably going to do you just fine. And if you're happy with the way your rifle handles, if you're happy with its reliability and your accuracy, if you're happy with the felt recoil, and if you don't notice that it gets incredibly dirty super quick, then basically if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But if you are looking to optimize your AR as much as possible, and you're kind of one of those neurotic AR builders like me, well, then it might be time to consider investing in a mid-length gas system if you're running a 16-inch barreled rifle. And the last point that I'll make, by the way, is that plenty of AR-15 manufacturers and barrel makers don't just randomly decide what gas port diameter they're going to use. The gas port diameter also plays a key role in how much gas actually makes its way into the bolt carrier group. And so even with a carbine gas system in a 16 inch barrel, there's a good chance that the manufacturer of your barrel or your upper receiver or your rifle for that matter, actually took the time to make sure that the gas port diameter was somewhat optimized to account for that dwell time. So again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hopefully this information was helpful for you. I am, by the way, going to take a deep dive into gas port diameters. There's a lot of really great data that's been collected over the years from literally hundreds of different barrel manufacturers. And we're just gonna kind of go over some common questions and answers about gas port diameters as well. So if you like videos like these, go ahead and click like and subscribe. And that's gonna do it for us today. I'm Travis from 80% Lowers. That's 80-lower.com, your source for quality 80% lower receivers and AR-15 build kits. Go ahead and check out our website, uh, 80-lower.com. And from all of us at 80% Lowers, we'd like to thank you guys for building and we'll see you again next time.